Welcome to all you need to know before imaging this or that. In this quick video, we're going to show you some tips and tricks for how to get the best possible image for this target. Let's, Let's go. go. You will find M5 in the constellation of serpents. Wait, did you know that this constellation covers two different parts of the sky? Of course, I learned it in the constellation handbook. <laughs> Get it now. <laughs> um, so, if you uh, read this book, you will learn that um, M5 is in serpents, which is uh, in two different areas of the sky, because serpents is a constellation that is divided into two areas. So we have the snake's head, serpent's caput, and the snake's tail, which is serpent's coda. Uh, serpent's coda is a bit more popular because it is home to one of the most famous nebula ever, which is the Eagle Nebula. But of course. This cluster is 25,000 light years away. It is close to a bunch of other galaxies, but nothing super notable. And it is one of the largest globulars in our galaxy, and the best time to capture it is in spring. M5 may be large, bright, and beautiful, but it has no nickname. How sad. It has a magnitude of 5.95, which makes it a tiny bit less uh, bright than the famous M13. But it is brighter than M3, which is another magnificent cluster. M5 is large and can be captured with pretty much any size telescope. You can spot this object with binoculars from a dark site. Although M5 is not a popular object for astrophotographers, it is very well known with visual astronomy communities because it's so easy to spot. This is M5 by the Hubble Space Telescope. And as you can see here, uh, the cluster is really colorful. There are plenty of blue and yellow stars. But are we going to talk about the elephant in the room? What? That it doesn't really look round. All right, so yes, that's true. Um, so M5, let's switch to our picture of M5 so you can see better. Um, so as you can see here, M5 is not very, very round. It's actually a bit oval. Now, it's not that unique. Many globular clusters have that shape, but it does look really nice and obvious here. This was taken with our refractor telescope and a one-shot color camera. This was just one hour in a Bortle 4 zone. And yeah, it looks really good for just one hour. And you can really image this, this target with pretty much any um, setup, really. Like, you can use a small telescope, a DSLR camera, a huge telescope, a, whatever you want. Um, whatever you currently have should be more than enough to have a great image of M5. Uh, just image it and spend maybe one or two hours on it from a dark side or at least bottle of four, and uh, you'll have a, a great result. And it's also very simple to process, uh, just a regular global cluster, there is nothing crazy around. Um, yeah, really simple. So we recommend doing 30 to 60 second exposures. This one here is a 60 second exposure, and that's what it, this is what it'll look like. Yeah, you don't want to, to take very, very long exposures for globular clusters because if there's a bit of wind, if there is a bit of you know, anything happening around, uh, the thing is bad and all that, you will have some, some trailing. And imagine you know, one, one trailing on one star, uh, you have like a thousand million stars in there. Uh, you'll have a, a crazy mess in there. And I think we, we've said this a few times already, but um, yeah, don't, don't take long exposures for globular clusters. So 30 seconds to 60 seconds is a sweet spot. Pretty good. And yeah. then also, most importantly, make sure that your guiding is perfect and amazing before you start. Either that, or if you think the seeing is bad in the sky, turn off the guiding, because the guiding will chase the seeing, and uh, that will be a, a huge mess again. So it's better to have no guiding at all than uh, having guiding with a terrible seeing. So uh, just in case the seeing at night is bad, just turn off the guiding and just take 30 second exposures. That's fine. And last thing, uh, the processing is very simple, like I said earlier. Uh, there is no, no nebulosity around it, there is no galaxies here and there. So it's very simple, it's just a global cluster. you can just crop it out and you can just uh, really focus on that target and that's it. It's very Super simple. Super easy. Very simple. Um, but yeah, um, we would love to see your image of M5 if you intend to capture it soon. So uh, hopefully these tips were helpful, we'll have the written version um, below. In the description below. And uh, I guess we'll see you next time. We hope this video helped you get to know this target just a little bit better and helped to prepare you to image it. We would love to see your image, so go on our website and find this object on our gallery and attach your image to the comment section. We would love to see it. 
And by the way, online, we have a bunch more tips for so many, so many objects. So go on there and check it out. So we'll catch you guys next time and clear skies. Clear skies. skies.